Welcome to Parliamentary Procedure for Clear and Connected Club Business. The event format today will be asking you a few questions to get started actually about club business and what you really look for in your member satisfaction within the club. Naturally, with a title like that, you can bet that I'm going to be proposing that parliamentary procedure could help with club business in this regard. And then finally, we're going to have some fun with an interactive scripted role play. Audience, I have a question for you. Now, at this time, of course, I just asked about the mute, but I'm going to ask if someone would just call it out uh, your thoughts on this or put it in the chat and perhaps our secretary could help uh, with calling this out. It's this, what's important to you as a club? What do you look for? Why are you here? I wonder if we could just hear a couple of short answers. To grow in my leadership skills. Mm, yes, leadership. And Madam Secretary, could we please keep track of these? What else? Maybe one or two more. Clearer communication with more impact. Mm, yes, clear, impactful communication. Wonderful. Let's see if we can get one more. Does anybody like to be heard in meetings? In other words, do you want to be that person that has a thought on your mind that you would have loved to express it but didn't come out? Or do you want to be that person that has the opportunity to connect? Dave, I didn't unmute myself. I was going to say, let every voice be heard. Mm, yes, that is wonderful. And with that, I don't think I can say it any better. I just need to move on from there. Thank you so much. What I want to say is consider that these can actually be your club goals that are now officially written down in the meeting minutes. Question for you. Isn't it fabulous when every member is actually heard and participates just like right now, and you're allowed to say yes or no. Any any quick feedback, a yes, a no? Absolute, absolutely. Excellent, thank you. What if in fact there were a world-renowned method to help with this? Well, it just so happens that we have something called Robert's Rule of Order. It was created by Henry Martin Robert, the first edition being published in 1876. It is a system designed to utilize parliamentary procedure in non-legislative organizations like this. We're not creating laws. It came about, he was a church organizer, apparently, I believe the story goes, and the meeting was cacophonous. It was far from convivial, I'll put it that way. People were talking over each other, and he realized, my goodness, we need to do something about this, and this is how this was actually born. There's also a rich history in Toastmasters International with Robert's Rules, which is a version of parliamentary procedure. If you remember nothing else in my presentation, please remember what I view anyway as the mission of, in fact, Robert's Rules and parliamentary procedure, which is Decisions are made by the majority where the minority is always heard. Let me say that again. Decisions are made by the majority where the minority is always heard. And I hope you'll get a feel for that and maybe be inspired to learn more about this throughout this presentation. There is, in fact, a vast body of knowledge. There are hundreds of pages continuing iterations and updated versions of this. There are expert level parliamentarians that deal with this topic, and I am not that expert level parliamentarian. However, I will say this, I have used this procedure for club business, and I'm presenting to you today what I would call the basic level package, specifically to help and enhance autonomy and collaboration for members to help with 
organized club business meetings. That was something that came up clear, impactful communication as someone was talking about. Finally, to provide tools for contentious issues. Let's face it, does communication always go perfectly as planned or are there things that can come up? Whether it be personal issues, whether it be just, oh, we're a little bit out of order in the meeting, let's get back on track. I hope that we've planted a seed of interest and let's have some fun. In this basic level package, we're gonna first talk about what's called a main motion processing of a general flow. The motion, the main motion is typically that topic that the club is concerned about and we can take action on in a unified way. We're also gonna talk about some basic motions appropriate for interruption. Why is that important? Because the whole premise of parliamentary procedure, Robert's rule of order, is in fact that one person is getting a chance to talk at a time. It's not people just talking over each other, but there are some motions where interruption would actually be necessary. So you could speak without the presiding officer calling on you because the, again, they are immediate. We're also gonna just provide a few thoughts on club business voting. It might be a review or it could be some new information for this club. Here we jump into the main motion processing. The presiding officer, you have a presiding officer every single meeting. As a matter of fact, Harvey uh, has been in Toastmasters for many years. He is our presiding officer. In this case, if he were presiding officer for a club business meeting, he would be the one to recognize a member offering a main motion. Then another member would have to, in fact, second that topic, that motion, if you will, in order for it to be heard for the assembly or general membership, in this case, in a less technical sense. And if this seems like a lot, I want to let you know in the interactive script, we're going to be dealing with a lot of this. And in our 11 to 15 minutes we have today, this is a vast topic, but I think we can get some essentials for you and for me to learn as well. Once it is in fact seconded, meaning of general interest to the assembly or membership, the presiding officer would lead a motion discussion. And that would be a back and forth with in favor and opposed to the motion. If you are in fact voting on this, the presiding officer would lead the vote. He would be asking for those opposed, in favor, and there are going to be some that don't take a positive or negative position, in which case those are called abstentions. When the voting has been completed, the presiding officer announces whether the motion is passed or failed. Something I really need to tell you about, even at this basic level, is that we have something called amendments. They are intended to modify in a very specific way in this case, the main motion, it's in fact to strike out, meaning <clears throat> kind of delete it. We don't use that word in parliamentary procedure, but you strike it out, or you can insert a word into the motion that was presented, or in fact, both. Just like the main motion, it does require a second. And this one is interesting because it is actually discussed and voted on prior to zooming the main motion. This is because it's intended to improve a motion for voting. What are some of these basic motions appropriate for just jumping in even when not called upon by the presiding officer? We're not going to get into these specifically in the script that we're going to go through in a moment, but I wanted to let you know that these would be reasons, in fact, to interrupt. One would be a call for oars of the day. And that's basically, hey, I notice we're getting off track with the agenda. A point of order, that's adherence to the general rules. Could be an appeal, that could be to reverse a ruling. In that case, it would require a majority vote, more than half, to pass that appeal. Questions or points of information. This would be to request clarity or information about the business at hand. Object to consideration. This would be to avoid unprofitable consideration. 
meaning you're kind of stopping it in its tracks, but that would also require a two third majority vote. So not just more than half. Point of privilege, this would concern the welfare of the group. This is if it's too hot, too cold, or something of that nature in terms of the welfare of the club or the assembly. In the Toastmaster chart of motions of which I'm going to be giving you a, some links and some resources. One of those things is called a Toastmaster chart of motions. They call it a question of privilege. I did promise an interactive script. We're going to be featuring the following characters. And they already know who they are. It will be a presiding officer. In this case, I'm just going to lead it because it's going to go you know, even quicker, I think, that way, just because I wrote this presentation. The VPE, uh, Vice President of Education, Treasurer, Character, and finally, Vice President, Membership. Let us have just a blast. Characters, are you ready by any chance? Ready. <laughs> Excellent. Now I'm going to put the script on the screen so that you can all follow along. It's rather short. Now to set the stage as presiding officer, we've already been at this club business meeting and someone's about to bring out a motion. And would we please begin with the first character? That would be Karen, of course. I move that our club by Dave, a small Toastmasters trophy for presenting at our club today. I second. It has been moved and seconded that the club will buy Dave a small Toastmasters trophy for presenting at the club today. We will now open the floor for discussion. We will listen to speakers both in favor of and opposed to the motion. Could I hear from someone in favor to start? Ah, Karen, I see you have your hand up. I'm in favor of buying Dave the small Toastmasters trophy because Dave would really like that. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Now we'll hear from someone opposed. Harvey, treasurer, I recognize you seeing your hand up. I'm opposed to this because it is not within the club's budget at this time. <laughs> Thank you, Harvey. Are there any more members that would like to speak? I see that Joan, vice president membership, has her hand up. I move to amend the main motion as follows, to strike the phrase small and insert the word large to read, I move that the club will buy Dave a large Toastmaster trophy for presenting at the club today. Do I hear a second? Hearing none, the amendment fails. We will proceed to the vote. All in favor, please unmute and say aye. 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 Okay, I heard two in that case, all right. And all opposed, please say nay. 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 And I made a mistake, I, I gotta go nay. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. sorry. <laughs> in, this, in this case, it appears that we have more saying nay. The nays have it and the motion fails. We will proceed to the next agenda item. Let's have a big hand for our participants. That was so much fun. I really appreciate you all. Now, as promised, we talked about doing a little bit of talk on club business voting. Club business voting does in fact require a quorum, a majority of all actor members uh, they need to be present for club business voting. That would be where we're having a meeting like this and all members have the opportunity to vote. We could put out the motion and proceed as we just did in the script. However, there is an additional common two-step procedure, which is at executive club meeting, executive committee meetings, I should say, club executive committee meetings, third time's a charm, the executive committee votes to decide on motions later introduced for club voting. Then a member from the executive committee would then introduce the previously described motions for voting with all the club members. The exception, of course, is if the 
executive committee members voting constitute a quorum, a majority of all active paid members. And that I, I just want to add to that in the spirit of this uh, getting that majority decision, but still all voices being heard, even if in the minority, of course, it's always nice to include the entire membership, but that is uh, just another point to think about. To recap, we've talked about how Robert's rules can enhance autonomy and collaboration for members, help with organized club business meetings, provide tools for contentious issues and other aspects that can come up. At this basic level package, we showed you the main motion processing general flow, basic motions appropriate for that interruption we just described, club business uh, voting scenarios, I just want to say if you have questions or would like to contact me, if you go to the District 7 Pathways Learning Center page, there's a contact form at the bottom there. Feel free to reach out through that and I can provide answers to any questions you might have. Uh, I do have a resource list. I'm going to put a bunch of that information in the chat, but you can ask me more about that. Our mission, many of us in District 7, I think I would say really a lot of us, we have this mission of helping Toastmasters members one at a time. And I see this parliamentary procedure and Robert's rules that we utilize in our meetings when we uh, certainly at the district level, and I'm encouraging even more for club level, decisions are made by the majority where the minority is always heard. I see that as a direct expression of the mission of helping Toastmasters members one at a time. Thank you so much for attending, and I certainly wish you the best in your Toastmasters journey. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster.